Yeah. Let's talk about Texas A&M. All right. Let's talk about the Aggies. Um, coming off of a a year last year, eight and five, four and four in conference, um, where they are now looking to 2017 as a big year. I think it's a big year for Kevin Sumlin. I think it's a big year for the Aggie program to establish itself as a as a top tier program in the SEC. I mean, they're running out of time, and yeah. basically, if you look at the the trajectory of Texas A and M under Kevin Sumlin. It is absurdly high and progressively a, a, a not very, uh, you know, a, a, a gradual slope yeah. down. Um, they need a big year. Yeah. And I think they need to win big to save Kevin someone's job. And so let's talk about what it's going to take. Let's talk about what it's going to take to win big. Let's knowing full well that they play in the toughest division in football. They play in the toughest division in the SEC West, but. To me, I think that you can narrow down three things, three kind of check marks that yeah. if you say they do these three things, they'll win relatively big. Now, relatively big may mean nine wins, yeah. you know, but if they do these three things, I think they've got a shot to win pretty big. All right. Number one, guard to guard play. We're going to talk a lot about their uh, tackles. Coda Martin is going to be their left tackle. I think he's a key cog in, in this offense. Looks like Tank Davis is going to be the right tackle. To me, their offense will revolve much more around what happens guard to guard. Yeah. Between Colton Prater, Eric McCoy, and Keaton Sutherland, I think those are the three key guys on the offensive line to hold it all together. Because that's what's that's what's going to decide whether or not they're able to it's it's all kind of dominoes, right? That's what's going to decide whether or not they're going to be able to run the ball. And we think they should be able to run the ball. We think Travion Williams is in for a breakout year. Yep. They've got some relatively solid depth at the running back position. This should be a good running team. They need to run the ball to take the pressure off of the quarterback that they're that's still unnamed. Could be Jake Hubenek, could be Kellen Mond, could be Nick Starkle, could be yeah. any of these guys. They need to take pressure off of that guy. And at the very least, be able to set up play action. And if you're going to run the ball well, you've got to be able to block on the interior. And especially when you talk about the the types of defensive fronts that they will be going up against in the uh, in the SEC, this is key. They need yeah. to be able to run between the tackles. And they were not able to run between the tackles with any sort of consistency last year. And that ended in conference play at least. And that ended up being their undoing. To me, those three guys, Keaton Sutherland, Eric McCoy, Colton Prater, guard to guard, those guys are extremely important. If they play well, A&M's, got, A&M's offense has a chance to be really good. A chance to be really good. If they don't play really well, they will almost certainly not be a good offense. That is just the, the bottom line of the situation. You hate to put it on three guys, but I think those three guys are pivotal yeah. as a as a call it an interior line unit, pivotal to, to uh, A&M's success because they need to have that interior running threat. Yeah, That, to me, is, is extremely important to them. Yeah. Number two, get B-minus linebacker play. Well, you're not setting the bar very high there, I Greg. don't ask a lot, okay? <laughs> I'm not saying that A&M has to have the greatest linebackers in the world. They don't. In fact, they're almost certainly not going to, okay? But... Linebacker for basically the last two seasons, yeah, really three, has been a wasteland. Yeah. For it improved A&M. last season, it did. It took uh, a baby. It took yeah. a baby step last year. So they were, I would say, a C plus linebacker team last year. Yeah. They got decent play from Richard Moore and Altara Laka. They bring back both of those guys. Plus, uh, they looks like uh, Cullen Gillespie is going to be the guy at the, at the other linebacker spot, unless they bring in a JUCO transfer. Well, they got a huge commit from Anthony Hines. They did. Anthony yeah. Hines could probably see the field, probably should see the field. He could have one of those linebacker right. spots. So, you take that interior of the defense. You take the linebacker play, and all you need is B-. minus. You don't need A+. Plus. You don't need A+. Plus. But, this the, the, the uh, linebackers could absolutely, I hate to say once again, but it could once again just totally cut the legs off from underneath this A&M defense. Yeah. 
they need to get they need to get better play from their from their linebacker play. Again, it doesn't have to be great. It yeah. just has to be. It has to improve. They have to take a step forward. They have that's, to take a step that's forward. All you're asking. B minus is all I'm asking. If they get B minus play, they'll be solid. Because last year, you look at their you look at their rushing defense, and it was you know middle of the road. Yeah. But all defenses knew that they could keep pounding and keep yeah. pounding and keep yeah. pounding. If they kept pounding, they were going to get past it. So they need to get B B minus defensive line play, especially or I'm sorry, linebacker play, yeah. especially because the defensive line. Is probably going to, I think we have to assume, going to take a at least a mild step back right. with the losses yeah. of Deshaun Hall. You can't Hall. assume that whoever's replacing them in any situation, I don't right. care who walks in, is just going to do the same job. With Deshaun Hall and, and Miles Garrett gone, they need to get that kind of defense, that linebacker play in the middle to solidify that line. That's, that's number two. And number three, they need to find a secondary threat. So, let's talk about... What's a very odd situation that we're not used to at A and M? Yeah, which is that all of a sudden there's a bit of a run on wide receivers. Yeah, like it has always been just an embarrassment of riches, it's right? True. Like they've always yeah. had, they've always had like unquestionably the best receivers in the yep. state. Like it's been nuts. It has, but now it's kind of abandoned ship. Yeah, Josh Reynolds is gone. Ricky Seals Jones is gone. Speedy Noyle is gone. Yep. Okay, well, that's three of your top four receivers. We know Christian Kirk is going to be their number one guy. He's awesome. And yep. he's great. Yep. Christian Kirk is great. Yep. But for the A&M offense to operate, they have to have multiple threats. And so I want to know who that secondary threat is going to be. Um, you know, we, we don't really know who it's going to be. Um, Damian Ratley, maybe, but he only had two catches last year. This is a team that is in desperate need of another guy to step up and be just a number two receiver. Yeah. That's the thing. You, A&M does not need a number one guy right now. They have a number one guy. They have a number one guy that I think 100 FBS teams in the nation would kill to have right. in Christian Kirk. Yeah. They have a number one guy. Probably more than that. But they need a two and a three. Yeah. And, and they need... I think one of the things that made Ricky Seals Jones and and really and Josh Reynolds Josh Reynolds especially especially yeah. they were safety blankets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were guys that release oh, valves. It's breaking down. Uh, let's just find yeah. Josh Reynolds. Yeah. Christian Kirk is not that kind of guy. Christian right. Kirk is a burner. He creates things. He cre- yeah. he's a creator. He's a big play machine. You need. I hate to say boring receivers, but you need a boring receiver. Right. You need a guy who can just be like, all right, I'm going to get you eight yards. Right. You know what I mean? I'm going to jump over everyone and get you eight yards. Yeah. Right. That's what you need. So who is going to be that secondary threat? If those three things happen for AM, guard to guard play, B minus linebacker play, and a couple of secondary threats emerging, AM is going to be fine. Yeah. But if they don't, it could really cut the legs out from underneath this offense or underneath this this team. We could be talking about a new coach in 2018. Yeah, Bottom I mean, line. and and it goes without saying, you know, the quarterback position is probably the most pivotal. Sure, but these units need to come up to to sort of ease the pressure in that situation and make it the best scenario possible. You're exactly right. They have to, you know. We know it's it's not breaking news that whoever the quarterback at A and M is going is is going to be an important piece. Right. This is this is bigger picture. This right. is these are more than just one guy. This is right. A, a kind of unit look at it. And so those are, to me, the three key things for Texas A&M in 2017. 